so we've got a couple of things going on this week. First off, you should have taken a, a formative assessment that was due last night. Um, and so if you haven't done that yet, make sure you get that done. The packet that you guys picked up today is not going to be used until tomorrow. So you don't need it, but don't lose that packet because in that packet you have um, everything that you need for the rest of the semester. That's the rest of the semester packet. It's got all of the review assignments and stuff for it up to and including your semester review. So, okay? so there's that one going on. This week, looking forward this week. Um, so today we have our final transformation, and that's our phase shift transformation. Um, so we've got that today. Then we also have tomorrow we are going to be curve fitting. Um, let me actually get out the, the old calendar. Okay, then tomorrow we will be curve fitting. Thursday we will review, and then this week, Friday, um, you will have your 4.4 test, okay? So test on this section. Now, this test is going to be a two-part test. There's going to be an, a multiple choice online component, and then there's going to be a three graph you do on your own and turn in part to it okay they are both actually equal in terms of weight okay they're both worth a total of nine points so together it's an 18 point quiz so if you don't do one portion you're going to only get a 50 percent okay so just so you are aware of that that there will be two parts to this test coming up and one of them you will have to turn in separately okay all right so with that being said so that's what we're looking for coming up this week and we'll remind you of that all week long so that we can do all that um going back to the formative um if you haven't taken it get it done um as soon as possible today because it's progress report day my progress report grades are due today so just so you are aware of that okay? Uh, those of you at home for tomorrow, there's a curve fitting note sheet um, that you will need for tomorrow. The in-personers just picked it up today, um, but you will have it. You'll have to print it off for tomorrow. Yeah. All right. So let's take a peek here at uh, some phase shifting, some horizontal sliding, if you will. Yeah. So if you'll notice here, in black, I have on the same window, so my window is from 0 to 2 pi, um, I have, in black, I've got the first lap sine curve. Okay? And then in pink, I have the first lap curve, but we've translated it, actually, do that too far, we added in this part right there. Yeah. So inside the parentheses, not attached to the coefficient, so coming after the variable, that is going to be our horizontal shift. Okay. And so what we're talking about today is we're talking about this C value. Okay? We're going to talk about C, and C controls the start. Okay? C is going to tell you where that function is going to start. A is going to tell you the amp, that's the vertical stretch, the amplitude. So that's going to affect the highs and the lows and, and the amplitude. 
be the period that's going to affect how far out it goes. So that's going to be an end with a combination of the start. Okay? The, the kicker is that C sets where you're going to start, and then B tells you how far out you go from there. Okay? And then D, that sets the middle, which then affects what the amplitude affects your high and your low, and all of that fun stuff. Okay? Now, we saved C for last because it is the more confusing of the four. Okay? Because it's inside a set of parentheses, because it's inside that parentheses, in math, we have to think opposite. Anything that's inside that set of parentheses, we need to think opposite. Probably want to write this stuff down. Okay? Not on there because that's for tomorrow. Okay? Okay? So we want to think oppositely for anything that's inside a set of parentheses. Okay? So when we look at C, we got to think oppositely. Okay? Let's dive right into one. Okay? So let's do this here now. So we've got the cosine of x minus pi over 3. Okay, that's our first one. So we can answer a few questions right off the start. Okay. What's one of the things from last week that we can answer about cosine of x of the quantity x minus pi over 3? One of my nine answers over here. Any of them? Do we know any of them right off the start? Anybody at home, feel free to jump in at any point in time, too. Jump in and answer one of them. The domain is all real numbers. Because it's a cosine function or a sine function, the domain is always going to be all real numbers. Love it. Okay? Another one. Amplitude is 1, because we have a 1 out here in front. The amplitude is going to be 1. Love it. Another one. How do you how do you know the fact that the high is one? Because the middle, this number that's out here, is a plus zero. So the middle is zero, so that means that the high is at one and the low is at negative one, which means my range is negative one to positive one. Love it. Yeah. What's our B value? What's our B value? Anybody, what's our B value? Go ahead, Lexi. Thank you for being able to read the board. Okay. So our B value is 1. What does that tell me? If our B value is 1. No, it does not start at 2 pi. Nope. Neither in this case. What does the B value tell us? Look back in your notes. What? 
So how do I find the period? 2 pi over b. So my period here is going to be 2 pi divided by the absolute value, really, of b, right? But b in this case is positive, so it's just 1. So my period is 2 pi. Okay? Right? So that we can all get from last week. Okay? Now, here's where things get a little more different. Okay? Because we've got this value right there, okay? That's going to be my C value. Okay? It's inside a set of parentheses, so I need to think oppositely about it, right? So that tells me that I am going to start at positive pi over 3, because it looks like negative pi over 3. And I think oppositely about it, so I'm going to start at pi over 3. Agree with that? Okay. So if I start at pi over 3, and my period is 2 pi, when would I end? If I start at pi over 3, the length of my wave is 2 pi, when would I end? Number one. Actually end. At 8 pi over 3. Exactly. Thank you for asking the question. How did I get that? Well, the end, let me go down here a little bit more, just focus in on this one. The end is the start plus the period. Because I'm going to start at a certain spot. It's going to take me a long time, or however long it takes me to get one full lap. So then that would be pi over 3 plus 2 pi. But I don't think of 2 pi as 2 pi. I think of 2 pi as 6 pi over 3. Oops. I think I might have said 8 pi over here. It should have been 7 pi. My bad. It's 7 pi there, not 8 pi. Got too many pies. Okay. Now, we need to put that onto our graph so we can put all of that stuff onto our graph. So first off, I would start with the fact that this is, this is a cosine curve. So I would start there. I would start without any axes whatsoever. I would just start with my curve. Okay. Now, my middle is at zero, so then I could draw my line back in at zero. Okay. But I started outside of my range. Or outside, I shouldn't say outside of my range. I started at pi over three. I ended at 7 pi over 3. I've got to come up with those other three numbers. So I take the average of the two. Okay? Pi over 3 plus 7 pi over 3 is 8 pi over 3 divided by 2 is 4 pi over 3. 
pi over 3 plus 4 pi over 3 is 5 pi over 3. Divided by 2 is 5 pi over 6. Four pi over three plus seven pi over three is eleven pi over three divided by two is eleven pi over six. And that is my graph. Okay. This week on your test. When it comes to the graphing, you will get one point for labeling your vertical axes. You will get one point for labeling your horizontal axes. And you'll get one point for the shape of your graph. Okay. Questions on that one? From any and all peoples? Try this one. Give me one. One that we know. Negative two sine of quantity x plus pi over four. Give me one that we know. The amplitude is negative two. The amplitude is not negative two. You're close though. It's just positive two. Amplitude is always positive, so it'd be positive two there for the amplitude. Love it. Okay. Give me another one that we know. What would be? The high would be two. Yeah, but that, I don't see a graph for the last one though. Since that's what we're doing. But we need the graph because the graph is what we're doing. You know what I mean? So what did you say? High was two. Okay, love it. Another one. Middle is zero. Another one. Low is negative two. Low is negative two, which gives me a range then from negative two to positive two. Okay. Another one. I'll take the easy one. Okay. Love it. So now let's talk. Start. Thinking oppositely, that would be negative pi over 4. Okay. Period. It's going to be 2 pi again. So if I start at negative pi over 4, 
and my period is 2 pi, where do I end? Seven pi over four. Okay. So this is a negative sine curve. Somebody give me the order for a negative sine curve. A normal sine curve would start, or a positive sine curve, excuse me, would go middle, high, middle, low, middle. For a negative sine curve, what is the order? The order for a negative sine curve. Start in the middle, start at high, start at low. Go ahead, Lexi. Middle, then what? Yep. Like that? Actually, here, let me draw it out a little bit farther. We got plenty of room. Like that? Okay. So I know that this one here is negative pi over 4, and I know that this one here is 7 pi over 4. You give me the other three. Give me the other three. Middle one. Anybody? Negative one plus seven. Negative one plus seven. Six divided by two. Three. So it's three pi over four. Negative 1 plus 3. Negative 1 plus 3. What? 2. Okay. Divided by 2. 1. So it's pi over 4. 3 plus 7. Three plus seven. Ten divided by two. Five. And there we go. Ten. Questions. Especially I will be fielding questions about how I got those middle three numbers. Seeing slash hearing none. Try this one, please. Graph this one. We'll graph this one. You guys will graph this one, and then I'll throw it up there on the board. Okay? So everybody's graphing this one. Go for it. I get that. Agree? Oppositely about the start. 
you start to meet a negative pi at period because b is equal to 1, sends it out 2 pi, so it means I end at pi, and then the middle is. Okay. Love it. Let's put them all together onto one graph now. Okay. So we'll do this one together, and then we'll uh, give you a couple to do on your own. So y equals 3 sine of the quantity 2 times the quantity x minus pi over 2. 2, excuse me, then plus 3. Lots of stuff going on here. However, the one constant is that my domain is all real numbers. Because we're sines and cosines, it's always going to be all real numbers. The other four, not so much. Okay. From here, I would go with my middle first. My middle is 3. So I'm definitely going to be elevated. My amplitude is also 3, which means from my middle, I'm going to go up 3. So 3 plus 3 gets me to 6. And from my middle, I'm going to go down 3. 3 minus 3 is 0. So my range is actually 0 to 6. I think oppositely about that one. So that would be my start is at pi over 2. I also need to come up with my period. That's going to be 2 pi divided by my b. And my b in this case is positive 2. So that is going to give me a period here of pi. If I start at pi over 2 and the length of my curve is pi, pi over 2 plus pi is 3 pi over 2. So I would end then. Now, when it comes to the actual graph, I'm going to graph my curve first, then I'm going to put in my axes. So my sine curve, I have a positive A value sine curve. So that's going to be middle, high, middle, low, middle. I think I, went, I, think I skipped a little too low there in the middle, on the low. Oops. I start at pi over 2, so that means I need to have a gap in between. My low is at 0, so that means that this would come down to there. Labels now, this is 0, this is 3. And that is 6. Horizontal labels, this is pi over 2. This is 3 pi over 2. I went pi, so halfway then would be 1 half plus. 
plus 3 halves, which is 2, divided by 2, which is 1. So this is just pi. Halfway between pi over 2 and pi is hyphen is 3 pi over 4. And halfway between pi and 3 pi over 2 is 5 pi over 4. Questions on it. On those last two, I used the unit circle because I knew I was at pi over 2 and I knew I was at pi. So halfway is going to have to be 3 pi over 4. I knew I was at pi and I ended at 3 pi over 2, so halfway has got to be 5 pi over 2. Okay. Or we could have done that. We could have added them and divided by 2. Pi plus pi over 2 is 3 pi over 2. Divided by 2 is 3 pi over 4. Pi plus 3 pi over 2 is 5 pi over 2. Divided by 2 is 5 pi over 4. Okay? Got it? Love it. Try that one. You try this one. Most of the people in the room here are on the graphing part, okay? but I'm going to tap the brakes here for one second because I didn't see when I was walking the room, around the room, I didn't see anybody do this. Factor out there B. Okay. Because we want it to look like this. Okay. So we need that B factored out. So if we have a coefficient on our X term and a C term, we definitely need to factor that out first. Okay. So from there, most of your other things are going to change with the exception, or I shouldn't say change, most of your things are going to stay the same with the exception of your start and your end. So that's why I let you guys go for a little bit without, without showing that to you first. Okay. So we got a domain that's all reals. We got a middle that's at zero. I got an amplitude that's two, which tells me my high is at two, my low is at negative two. I got a start value of pi over six. I've got a period of 2 pi over 3, So now I got to do some extra math here. So one six plus two thirds. So that would be one six plus four thirds, or excuse me, four six. So that's going to be five six. So I'm going to end at five pi over six. It is a negative sine curve, 
So middle, low, middle, high, middle, which means then that I can adjust that. I started at pi over six. Two, zero, and two, pi over six, five pi over six, halfway, what do we got? One plus five, six, divided by two, divided by six. Because it's really, it's three pi over six. So what's three over six reduced to? One half, so pi over two. Okay. Now, here's the tricky one, halfway again. So now we've got one sixth plus one half, well that's going to be one six plus three six, that's four six, which is two thirds, then I got to divide that by two, which is one third. That's pi over three. In there. Now we've got one half plus five six. So that's three six plus five six. That's eight six, which is four thirds. Divide that by two is two thirds. We got one more. We actually have two more. Love it. Yeah. Love this one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, buddy. Go for it. So my middle is at one. Great. Middle is at 1. Amplitude is 12. So that means my high is going to be at 13 and my low is going to be at negative 11. Yes? Yeah. My start is going to be at negative two. My period is going to be at so that means that I am going to end at zero. If I use my trig identity, Number, looking at the pink sheet, number two, this would be negative 12 times the sine of pi times 1 plus 2 plus 1. Okay. Take that 
negative sign and pull it out in front. So that gives me a negative sign curve. So that's middle, low, middle, high, middle. My middle is at one. So that's one. So that means zero is down there. Starts at negative two, ends at zero for my axis. So that will put my vertical here. So my middle is at one, my high is at 13. Started at negative two. I started at negative two. I ended at zero. Halfway between them is negative one. Halfway between them is negative one half. Halfway between them is negative three half. And I don't have any pies on those because my period is just two. Agree? Love it. Okay. So now, going forward for this week, you have now all of the tools in your toolbox to complete both the 4.4 worksheet, which was page two in your uh, spaghetti lab packet that you guys got a couple weeks ago. Remember on that one for you guys, because you guys were the first, the first draft, you got to add these three problems in there, okay? Because for some reason they even didn't copy on that worksheet, okay? And you now have enough to do the last page of the worksheet, which is the which is the 4.4 review. Okay? We will also be collecting for everyone that third page, just that 4.4 review. That one's going to be collected by next week, Monday. Okay?